If you're building your own fursuit, one wrong mistake can potentially ruin hundreds of hours of your work. Here are five solutions to the most common problems that newer fursuit makers make. Hi, I'm Waffles, and over the last year I built my very own fursuit from scratch, and let me tell you, a lot of mistakes are made. The first problem, and if you ask me honestly, the biggest one for me personally, is over analysis and spending way too much time on details. And what I mean by that is when you look at some um, a problem and you spend way too much time focusing on making it perfect, whether this be like a sketch where you like try to draw a sketch and it has to be perfect, or like if you're carving some foam and you spend way too much time like snipping at the edges and like changing it and adjusting it, you end up missing the whole big picture from the outside and you spend way more time than you need to. Sometimes the best solutions to problems like these are just to kind of start over, create a new one, fail again, but by the third time it'll almost always be faster and better than your kind of original fiddly um, start where you spend the entire time like focusing on one thing. I made this foam base a while back and it has a great example of what I'm talking about. Do you see how all the carving is like this little like hash, 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 snip, snip, snip? It's really inefficient and it ends up just looking kind of bad. Instead, you want nice neat cuts that can show intent and form. When you are confident with something, it ends up looking so much better. The solution is to take a step back and really think about this problem from the highest level you can. Once you have a good kind of perspective of the whole problem, then you can kind of just um, decide on your own where to spend all that time on the details. The second problem that can absolutely derail any project is not double checking your work. When I created these paws, I spent a lot of time cutting out the fur, trimming it all down, adding the fabric, trimming it all out, sewing it all together, only to realize at the very end that I had sewn the toes on backwards. Everyone makes mistakes like that, and man does it suck, but just spending an extra 30 seconds more of time to really make sure that it's all lined up correctly, especially with stuff that's permanent, like inking or sewing or anything like that, well, you'll just save yourself so much time in the long run. Because man, having to redo a ton of work that you've already done, it sucks. The third mistake that newer fursuit makers make is not shaving your fur ahead of time. Just like how you wouldn't paint with only one color or cook with only one spice, using only one length of fur will end up making your bodysuit look boring and dull. When we built our fursuit, we only ended up using two different lengths of fur, and I think that was a mistake. Instead, if we just spent more time planning out all of the different lengths of fur ahead of time, we could have given our character way more kind of natural energy in life. Just having those different fur lengths helps so much when selling your character. One of my favorite artists to talk about when it comes to the length of fur is Mix Candy. If you take a look at their work, they're a master in using the different lengths of fur to show different elements of the character. Study their work, get good, problems like this are really easy to fix once you notice them, and because once you notice it, you'll never forget it, and man, your fursuits will look so much better. Time for a bonus, here are five of my favorite tools that I use while making fursuits. One, spring-loaded scissors. They come in all sorts of different types of shapes and flavors, but the reason why they're so good is that they save your wrist while constantly cutting thread. Two, the Ed Head by Monster Makers. It's basically the best model head that you can buy and makes crafting your foam base so much easier, especially when compared to those cheap styrofoam ones. Three, a box cutter with replaceable blades. Having a constantly sharp knife makes cutting fur and foam so much faster. Just makes it sure that you dispose of the blades properly. Four, a Sharpie permanent marker that you can use to write on fur and foam. These markers are classics for a reason. They are cheap and almost always get the job done. Five, large newsprint paper. It's easy to use, can make, can make paper templates, and basically is almost always coming in handy. It's another example of a cheap product that's almost always useful. Do you ever have the problem where your fursuit looks lopsided or just not quite right? Usually when you have this problem, the solution is to make sure that any piece that you flip over to get the duplicate of, when you flip over your pattern for example, is the same. You want to have as much precision as you can here, because us humans are really good at finding inaccuracies and symmetry, so like on the face and stuff, if one side is slightly different, we're going to notice it right away. They say the sign of a true craftsman is being able to make something consistently and precisely. You're going to have this problem a lot, especially in stuff like the hands or toes or claws, where you need to make a lot of something precise, and then if any one of them is kind of lopsided, you're going to notice it because it's going to stand, up, stand out of the group right away. Being able to cut out stuff precisely and consistently is really hard, but it's one more thing that you can control to make sure that your own fursuit looks that much better. It's hard, we know, but sometimes when you get both pieces exactly the same, it feels really good. The last problem that we're going to talk about is arguably the hardest to solve, and that's giving up on your fursuit before it's finished. This is a universal problem, and honestly, the best solution is to go slow, start small, and set realistic goals for you to accomplish. As a newer fursuit maker, building a whole fursuit sounds incredibly daunting. It's a huge task that takes a long time. Instead, if you can break this problem down into as many smaller pieces as you can, you almost guaranteed success. 
Instead of saying, building your own first fursuit, talk about building just your own head, or even if you want to start smaller, building just your own foam base. These mini checkpoints serve as places you can take breaks, take a step back, and more importantly, relax. Remember, the most important part for a project like this is actually finishing. You'll be so much happier with the final result when you actually finish it, as opposed to getting done halfway through and just starting over something else. Remember, on a journey of a thousand miles, everyone starts with just a single step. Any forward progress you make is gonna help complete your fursuit and you're gonna end up being so much happier with it in the end. If you've gotten any value from these videos, I'd please ask that you like and just double check that you subscribe. Just, just double check, just make sure. It helps out so much and it's a free thing that you can do to help support these videos. Thank you guys so much. I can't wait to see you guys again soon. Yeah.